Hi, this is Superboo3. Today we are continuing our playthrough of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments with a new case. This is the Abbey Grange Affair. The game is afoot, not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. Yeah, I completely agree with my previous choice. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms... The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Theresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. OK, let's just take a look around Madame first. Linden Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. Lord George Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. 
My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. I should have actually done the um, portrait before I actually asked her anything. I'm tempted to think um, she's obviously lying. Her having already solved it by telling me this. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. I'm mainly suspicious because um, the first wife also was getting beaten by her husband. I'm expecting someone to have killed their husband at some point in this game. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. I'm going to inspect this room first. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid, Teresa, was taken at a port, but which one? Sir 
So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. A trapper's hut. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. I'm personally suspicious she could have just blamed them. So I'm going to say the Randalls are blamed at the moment. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Okay, I think we're done there, so I'm going to leave that room. And let's go and investigate the body. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. That would have had a lot more impact if the textures loaded properly. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. That's suspicious because the lady said that they fought. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Don't see why they would have stopped. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. So why are none of them stolen? A bottle of wine is missing here. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. Sailor's knots. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. 
Chateau Calon Segur, French wine, Grand Cru. Three glasses, that's suspicious. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. I don't know enough about wine to comment on that. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. Should have had a sword cane. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Okay, I'll put the two glass in the glass of B-Swing. I think there's two people they're trying to make it look like three. Oh, okay, I have no clue. I'm going to say two people, though, why not? Okay, dead body and bent poker. The way that's written suggests there could be room for error, though. Oh, maybe he died from banging his head. Yeah, we'll go with accident for now. Okay, so I searched that side and found nothing. Um, I'll see if I can ask the wife anything more. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. There, that, yes, yeah, so it's got to be the five. And just one more. I'm going to try and go slower because it, it looks like the numbers were moving less when I did it. It's around here. Seventeen. Well, if it's that easy to crack open a safe, I can't it believe no one else took it. To keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. That's interesting. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Yeah, I think the wife had something to do with this.
Okay, so we've investigated everything that we can at the moment and it looks like we need Toby to continue the case. I think that's a good time to stop. So thank you for watching and until next time, bye.